Alright guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up and use a MIDI controller in Scratch Live. Now I've already done videos before on how to set up and use a MIDI controller, but they're a little old and outdated now, and the video quality wasn't up to par. And it de mainly dealt with mapping the Behringer DDM4000 mixer. But there are various different types of MIDI controllers and a lot of price ranges out there, so uh, find one that suits your needs and your budget. In my video I'm going to be showing you the X1 from Native Instruments, However, don't think this video is specifically for the X1. The process of mapping a MIDI controller is the same regardless which one you have. Now, to map something in Scratch Live to your MIDI controller, the first thing you need to do is click on the MIDI button up here at the top of the screen. This will bring you into MIDI Learn mode. Now, once you're in this mode, you can move your mouse over any of the other buttons in Scratch Live, and you should see a gray box pop up. And that means that you can assign it to a MIDI controller, or a MIDI button, or anything on your MIDI controller. Now we're going to take a look at some of the more commonly used things. So let's start off with scrolling through your track listing and your crate listing and loading tracks. Now in 2.0, they changed it up a little bit. In the previous versions, you'd see a big library box down here at the bottom of the screen for the library controls. Well, they moved that now into this little show MIDI panel box right here, which you must click then. And then this will bring up the library options. So let's take a look at scrolling through your crates and your track listings. To do that, you're going to want to assign this button right here in the middle, or knob, excuse me, and you should see the gray box. So all you need to do is then click it with your mouse, and it'll turn orange, and then you simply just need to turn the knob on your MIDI controller that you want to assign for scrolling through your track listings. I'm going to use this knob right here. Now, after you turn it, it should turn green on the screen, uh, signifying that the function has been mapped. Now since this is a relative encoder, I need to change it to relative encoding by pressing the C key. So let's exit out of MIDI learn mode, and let's turn the knob, and we should see that it is scrolling through our track listing. Alright, cool. So how do we get over to scroll through the crates? Well, we need to re-enter MIDI learn mode again, and then click on the show MIDI panel. And you're going to want to assign this tab focus button right here to a button on your MIDI controller. That is how you switch between the crate area and the track listing area. So let's click it. And I'm just going to press this button right here on my MIDI controller, and it'll turn green, signifying that it's a sign. Now let's exit MIDI Learn Mode and test it out. And let's just press it, and as you can see, it'll jump uh, the orange highlight bar from the tracklist area to the crate area. So that is how you switch between the crate area and the uh, tracklisting area. And you use the same knob to uh, scroll through both uh, the tracklisting area and the crate area. All right, so let's take a look at loading tracks now. So again, click on MIDI. It's, that will be in the show MIDI panel, and then you'll see over here, load left. Uh, so click it, and let's assign that button right there. And load right over here, and we'll click that one over there on my MIDI controller. And there you go. So those are the buttons I'm going to use now to load tracks to the left and the right decks. So I'll use the knob to scroll through uh, the list. Hit that button, that will load it to the left deck. And let's load this track to the right deck. And there you go. So that is how you scroll and load through load tracks uh, from your MIDI controller. And you know that's pretty much it. So now just simply repeat the process now for all the other functions you want to assign in Scratch Live. So again click on MIDI at the top to enter MIDI learn mode and then just move over the mouse move your mouse over the button in Scratch Live uh, that you want to assign. So if I want to do uh, trigger cue points I would use these little triangles over here on the left side and again over here for the uh, right deck uh, that's how to trigger the cue points on the right deck and let's uh, you, I mean pretty much everything is MIDI assignable in Scratch Live so if you click on the SP6 sample player click on MIDI learn and then you can assign pretty much anything in the SP6 sample player if you want to trigger your samples you would assign this triangle play button right here uh, let's just map it to I don't know this button right here and there you go so uh, let's exit MIDI learn mode and then press it and you'll see that it triggers the uh, sample in that slot. Uh, same thing, uh, let's look at the DJ effects now in Scratch Live 2.0. Uh, let's bring up the advanced mode. If I wanted to assign all the individual knobs on parameters, again, click on MIDI Learn, and then just move your mouse button over uh, the knob, click it, and then move your knob on your MIDI controller that you want to assign. And that's pretty much it. So uh, let's test it out now. And as you can see, uh, hopefully, there it goes, um, that is the a knob that we assign to that knob for the DJ effects. So um, there you go. I mean, it's a relatively simple process. Just move your mouse over the function you want to assign, uh, click it with your mouse, and then move the button or knob or slider on your MIDI controller that you want to 
assigned to that function in Scratch Live. So uh, there you go. That's pretty much the gist of it on how to uh, MIDI assign things in Scratch Live to your MIDI controller.